now. Pull the chat back up. Honey, will you shut that door for me, please? And let me move this keypad out of the way really quickly. Okay, so welcome to Live with Prima, everyone. I'm your instructor, Miranda, tonight. We are going to be creating these altered bottles right here, which I think we all have access to glass bottles, plastic bottles. It really doesn't matter, matter the shape or anything like that. I mean, these can be any shape, and they're still going to look awesome for home decor. If you have some bigger ones, that would be really, really cool. Um, we're going to use a few coats of mediums on these, so I went ahead and prepped one of the bottles, um, but this one we'll be doing from scratch. And this bottle is actually one of the very old Got Flowers, that's the name of them, from Prima, the old Got Flowers bottles. Um, and it still opens, I'll show you in a minute, um, and it's got all the flowers inside of it still. So this is an actual Prima bottle full of those little baby flowers. And then this one... Oh, I don't remember if this is the one I got at Michael's or not. I think this is the one I got at Michael's um, in just the glass section. And it's just like one of those vintage looking regular bottles. So nothing fancy at all. Um, Starbucks bottles, if you get the cold coffees, those are perfect. I mean, those are almost identical to the Got Flowers ones. And that's initially what I was going to use, but I just love this one, so I did this one. But any bottle will do, you guys. So just go ahead and save your glass bottles and recycle them or upcycle them into some gorgeous altered art. Um, let me go ahead and give you guys some announcements really quickly, and we'll jump right in. The next show coming up is on Tuesday, March 15th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, and it is Exploring Opal Magic Paints with Miss Sharon. See her gorgeous project on today's blog post which is prima.typepad.com. The Prima blog is always full of amazing inspiration, so definitely want to check in daily or at least weekly at the very least. Okay, second announcement is Art Venture Seaside Event. This quaint exclusive event will take place in Coronado Beach, California with three amazing instructors, including Anna Dabrowska, John Creighton Peterson, and Debbie Anderson. Go to primamarketinginc.com and click on the Art Venture tab. For more information, or email Denny Ruffner, and his email is denny at primamarketinginc.com. Seats are always filling fast with these art ventures, so if you are interested, reserve your spot as soon as possible. That way it's there and you're not missing out, okay? And like I always say, take me with you so that I can go. Okay, so let me move all of this stuff out of the way, and we will get started. So I went ahead and prepped the large bottle just because this t this is a lot of steps to get it to this aged um, kind of look. And I've had a lot of people ask me, how did you get it to look so old? Um, we're just going to use everything as Prima minus one thing. And I'm sure you guys can guess what I use because I think I use it on every show. And it's alcohol inks. Um, they just give a really good, in, in, con in conjunction with the color bloom sprays that I use, they really create a shadowy and vintage look. So that's what we're going to be using. So I went ahead and prepped this bottle. I have it ready to go and ready to embellish. I've got quite the glare. Hold on one second, y'all. Let me move my lighting a little bit. So this one is prepped and ready to go. It's got the mica flakes on there drying right now. So we are going to focus on the smaller one and I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step on how to achieve this look on your bottles and then we will be embellishing. So I'm going to set them over here so that they're still kind of in view. Let me move my mouse pad. Okay. I didn't have this in view in the beginning because my glass mat is so gross. Delena, don't look because I know how you are, but this is so gross, y'all. But I knew I was going to be decoupaging and stuff, so I just left it as is. Okay, this is the Got Flowers bottle. Proof right there is the barcode. This is after one coat of gesso, and I literally just put this on here. You can see it's still wet. Um, I just wanted to go ahead and get one layer on there because we are doing a couple layers, but this still has the flowers inside of it. So if you guys remember this, these were the little flowers that come in the Got Flowers bottles, and we're actually going to be using them as well. Um, so I'm going to heat set this really quickly. And I do have my heavy-duty 
crazy gnarly looking paint stripper here. So don't judge me y'all. But this thing gets the job done, let me tell you. Once you use it, you just won't go back to using the regular heating tools. Okay, I think that's good enough. Okay, I didn't even remove the stickers on here. I left them on there because it really doesn't matter to me. It's going to get covered up. Um, oh, and I can still read the uh, item number for y'all. The item number for the Got Flowers is 505133, and these are the Got Flowers in mustard. The colors are beautiful. They're just soft brown colors. So I just left the sticker on there and um, just added the gesso on top. I did that because we're going to be decoupaging some strips of tissue paper. This is just generic um, script tissue paper. You can use, you know, a name brand if you want, or you can use a script stamp if you want even. But for me, I liked to decoupage on my bottles because I feel like it gave it some grit when I added the mediums on top of it. When you're working with bottles, this is such a, a non-porous surface, it's really slick. So you're definitely going to want to gesso it. And I feel like this step just really helps to give everything something to stick to. Okay, and for time constraints only, my favorite decoupage item to use is the 3D matte gel, but it does take a little bit longer to dry. So because we're trying to be quick here, I'm going to be using this Fast Finish Decoupage by Beacon. And I forgot I had this stuff, and when I was getting ready for the class tonight, I saw it in the drawer, and I was like, this stuff works really quickly. It bonds and seals like in seconds. So I'm going to use this one tonight. It's not as good, but it's going to be a lot quicker. So I'm going to grab my kind of beat up brush here to do this step with. Okay, so I just took a, a piece of tissue paper and ripped it down to smaller sizes. We just want, we don't even have to cover the entire thing with the tissue paper, just some of it, okay? So I'm just going to take this and squirt it directly onto the bottle. I really like this decoupage product too, Carrie. Um, I had never tried beacon glues um, until last year. And I got a package of them, and I, I, I like their I like their adhesives a lot. I was actually very impressed with most of them, all of their adhesives. So this is really easy. You just pour it on there. It's a very liquidy. It's completely different than most um, decoupage mediums because usually you know you think like Mod Podge or the three D matte gel or gloss gel. You've really got some weight to it, some thickness. This stuff is like you can't even tell it's there. It's almost like water. Like it's very thin. Um, but it dries super, super quick. The only complaint I'll have is you do get a lot of, you can see right there, because I only have one coat of gesso, when I rubbed with my bottle it kind of scratched off. That is exactly why I am putting some tissue paper on here, because I want to make sure that none of my paint or anything is coming off of this bottle. Um, Chris was telling me I should have wiped the bottles down with alcohol first, and I did not do that. Um, he's pretty experienced when it comes to painting things, and he said if I would have sanded it a little bit and put some alcohol on there, then everything would stay perfect, but yeah, I didn't do that. All right, so we don't, you don't have to cover this perfectly. Just add as much as you want. It's kind of like when you're stamping, you just kind of randomly stamp, so I'm just adding in a few places. Let's go up top here and add some more. You can see I'm just squirting it directly on there. I'm not being particular at all. When I'm doing it on the edge here, actually, you know, it scratched that. I forgot that I want the lid to go on there, so I'm glad I caught that. Um, this one does have a lid, so definitely don't go up that far with these bottles that have lids, but with the other one I did, I went all the way up with it, and I just used my finger to kind of push down into those creases where the, um, I don't know what that would be called, the taper, tapering is where the bottle screws on. can't think of the correct word right now. Okay, so I'm going to add a few more strips of this. Definitely want to cover up like the stickers, although that would be kind of cool when you're doing mixed media work to kind of have a barcode showing through. Everyone is having a good night. Let me look over there and see what y'all are chatting about. 
the loom show that was amazing I watched it this morning Carrie I had no idea it would be so easy to do those like wall tapestries I'm, I'm definitely gonna get a kit now I mean that was beautiful Courtney had amazing ideas on um, using that I really loved it especially my favorite thing was the one she showed about halfway through the show not the one she actually did um, I think it was using the Aspen blush kit that one was particularly really beautiful to me I liked it a lot okay I think this is gonna be the last one we're gonna put on there because we're not going for total coverage here y'all we're just trying to get some interest into our background maybe one more right here because I'm more of a perfectionist than I let on. I know mixed media is kind of supposed to be um, haphazard and not perfect, but I'm a pretty big perfectionist, so that's hard. All right, one more piece here. I love tissue paper just because it is so thin and it just wraps around um, pieces so easily. I love that. I mean, you can get patterned paper to decoupage on too, but um, tissue paper is just a little bit easier. Okay, so I'm going to take these other scraps and stick them to the side for now and wipe off my mat because I've got tons of that kind of on there. All right, I'm going to heat set. This dries pretty quickly, but I'm going to give it a really quick heat set. And I'm sorry, y'all, I try not to use a lot of heat setting in my shows, but kind of have to. So I'm just going to heat set this real quick. And after I get all my mediums on this one, we will set it aside to dry fully and we will add our embellishments to the other bottle. You know, when you're creating these projects at home, you let I usually let everything air dry. Um, a lot of times I'll leave things overnight. So um, when you're on the show, you got to speed it up though. And I have a lot of bubbling going on, but that really doesn't bother me at all. The more texture, the merrier. So, no big deal to me. All right, that's completely dry already. Sometimes I'll kind of rub it in my hands like this, and I feel like that helps to flatten out any of the air bubbles in the um, tissue paper. So that's what we have so far. We just added some detail onto there, and it's going to give our mediums something to stick to. Okay, so we're going to go in with our paint now and we're going to be using the chalkboard paint which is almost gone in this color. This is the egg blue and you can see how gnarly looking it is. I just use this one all the time. The item number is 577216. This color of blue is just amazing. I love this color so much. Ouch. I always close these so tightly because I don't want my paint to dry out and then it's really hard to open it. Okay. So we are just going to go on here and we're going to paint our bottle. It doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to mix the chalkboard with regular white paint. And you almost don't want to cover up all of the script. So I've got a huge section right there painted. So I'm just going to kind of move my bottle and skip the area and go down to the bottom here. So you want to leave some of the areas um, not painted so that the script does show through. That's the whole point of having it there. You can use a baby wipe and wipe down um, some of the areas and it'll make it a little more see-through. But I just kind of randomly go in and use my blue paint. And I try to go anywhere where the um, tissue paper is not and cover those areas with the paint and then definitely get your lid but you don't want to put a ton of paint on the top part because like I said we are still going to have the um, lid on this one the screw on lid and if you put much paint on there it's not going to close properly so alright that's what we have so far with our chalkboard paint on there and you can see how well that covers and having the gesso and the tissue paper on there gives it something really to stick to alright so that is it for our egg blue chalkboard paint. And I've been trying to use rags lately instead of paper towels. So you see these really grungy looking rags. I do wash them, but they just still end up looking really grungy. Um, but you can go in if you want the script to show here. I'm just going to use my finger and just kind of lift some of that paint off of there. So that's all you have to do. You can go in with a baby wipe and just kind of pull off some of the excess paint 
and let the script show through a little more because we're still going to go in with some white gesso again too. Okay. All right, now we're going to heat set again, you guys. I warned you, fair warning, lots of it. That is a very good idea, Carrie, to cover the lid with um, clear wrap. Yeah, because a lot of times I do that. I will add so much paint and stuff on there that I can't get it to screw back on. Threads would work. Good idea. Good ideas, y'all. Thank you. Try not to hold your heat gun too close because y'all know how it will start doing that bubbling thing, which is cool if that's what you want, but... We already got enough texture going on, so. All right, this is almost dry already. I love this heat tool. Can't even really call it a heat tool, but it's my heat tool. Delena, are you talking about making a tapestry? If so, definitely film the process. You would make a beautiful one. Okay, so next step is we're going to use some of our texture paste. I did use the white crackle on the original ones, but this takes so long to dry, y'all. I think I'm going to skip it tonight. Um, I did use it on the bottle I prepped, though. So let's see if you can see that step. I just don't want to have to. There we go. I don't know if you can even see it. It's such a subtle effect that it's it's not, you know, it's not pertinent. You don't have to do it. But the one thing I feel like really shows up well is the other texture paste, which is the white sand one, which is a newer one. And I definitely want to use that one. Okay. Um, so this is the white sand texture paste from the Art Extravagance line. And the item number is 961473. Delena, you're going to do amazing on that. Oh, everything you do is amazing. So, of course, that'll be no different. I've got the piece kind of stuck down in there. Okay. I'm going to use my paint brush to apply this. I have my lovely new silicone brush, but um, for this white sand, I kind of like using the paint brush. And I am not like globbing this on by any means. I am just barely kind of touching it in areas. And I'm going to kind of focus on the areas where the script is too, just to add more texture to those areas. This just creates a really cool effect after it's all dry, and then when we go over it with gesso, it just kind of highlights it, and it looks really cool. Okay, so that was that step. Now we're going to go in with our gesso, and that, I think, will be it for the big drying process. We'll just go in with the alcohol inks after that. Okay, let's see here. And it really does make a difference on the gesso that you use. I'm sorry, I'm definitely biased when it comes to gesso. This is a heavy gesso. This is really thick. I do not like the really runny gessos like different brands have. I guess it's just all preference. But like this is super thick and it definitely um, covers a lot better than some of the thinner ones. All right, so I'm gonna go in. I usually like dip my paintbrush in there and then kind of tap off on the lid over here just to get the excess off. And when you go over that white sand paste, it really looks super cool. It definitely brings it out a lot more when you go over it with the white gesso. I don't know if you can see yet, but after I get it all done, hopefully you'll be able to see the texture here. It looks really cool with the gesso on top of it. It looks cool, you know, without it, but I like it better with the gesso. So I'm not putting a ton. I'm just kind of adding streaks of white to kind of break up all the blue. And then by the end, you know, most of that script's probably going to be covered up, which is totally fine. It's all about different layers. So I'm just going to keep adding paints until I like the way it looks. We still have our alcohol ink to add to, so i got to keep that in mind and not cover up too much. Okay. And I do want to use some of the new um, with Carrie's permission, of course, because this was not on my supply list, but I was messing around with it, and it's so amazing. I kind of wanted to use it on this bottle. The new um, Artisan Powders from the Memory Hardware line, Frank Garcia. They're so amazing. Okay, so 
so that is it. I did cover up a lot of the blue, as you can see, and that is what we have so far. So we've still got streaks of the blue, the script's still showing. Hopefully you guys can see that white sand texture paste more so now when it's highlighted like that. Okay, I'm going to do, let's see here, I think that's good. I might add one more little streak of, no, that's good. Let me not be too fussy here. Okay, we're going to heat set one more time. Good night, Deb. Thank you so much for coming out. I love the sand paste. It's really, really cool. I really like it. I'm slowly but surely getting like all of the art basics and all of the art extra extravagance pieces um, to have in my stash, and they are just amazing. Every single one of them. I mean, I just love them all, especially the new art alchemy paints. Oh, they're to die for. They're amazing. All right, I think that's dry. My heating tool does dry very quickly. Okay. So that is dry, and this is what we've got so far. Okay, now to make it look super aged and super old, we're going to use some color blooms and some alcohol inks to get that really um, funky aged effect. Um, you can see it right there. So what we're going to do is grab a couple, couple different colors. I'm using the Empress Gold um, color bloom spray, which is item number 580315. And I'm going to use a tiny, tiny amount. I don't even know if I should mention it because it's such a tiny little few, few splatters of the worn leather, which is the vintage metal color bloom. And that item number is 573829. But basically, we're just going to kind of tap the uh, a couple of little splats onto our bottle. And then, of course, our alcohol inks. And I have a couple different colors here because, honestly, I don't ever remember which one I used. Okay. So to get the effect, you're going to do some layering, basically. And I'm surprised those flowers are not falling all out. Let me kind of stuff them down in there. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me get it to where the paste is showing. Let me know if you guys can see that. My camera is not wanting to zoom in very well. Hopefully you guys can see that texture paste. You can definitely see it on the picture. Let me move my lighting a little. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know it's hard to convey things on Ustream. The quality is not perfect. But on the video, you can definitely, definitely see that. Yeah, it still has flowers in the bottle, so I'm kind of pushing them down in there so they don't fall out. Because I just like keeping them in there. Like, I'm storing these in my scrapbook room, so I'm going to keep them in there. All right, so to get the alcohol ink effect, the aged effect, I guess I should say, we're going to use some alcohol inks. And I go ahead and spritz my entire bottle. I don't want it, like, dripping wet, but I want it moist enough to where... When I lay my alcohol inks there, you can hear that crunching sound from the sand. It's really cool. Um, I want it to kind of run, okay? So I'm going to go in with the Latte alcohol ink. And I, you guys know when I use this, I'm not particular at all. I'm just going to drop it like that and then spritz it. And whatever it decides to do, I'm going to let it do that. I'm not going to be picky about it at all. This will definitely let the uh, white sand paste show up a lot better too. So once I get this on here, um, I'll show one more up close. And you can see the sand paste a lot better when you got some contrast on there. So I let it flow. I'll kind of stop it from going all the way down, but I pretty much just let it do its own thing. I really like how it just kind of spreads out and just, it looks really pretty to me. So I'll do a couple of them on the top, and that one just kind of peeked down the back. I didn't even know it was doing that, but we're going to roll with it because it looks cool. Okay, so I'll do a few drips coming from the top, and then I'll turn it over, and I'll do drips coming down from the bottom, because I like it just to be kind of even. So I'm going to spray some water first, and then just do one drop of alcohol ink, just like that, and then a spritz of water. And I don't like it to go sideways, so I usually stop the sideways drips. 
I like them just to kind of run downward. We've got a few casualties there, a few flowers falling out, no biggie. Tuck them to the side real quick. Okay, so this is the effect we have so far, and alcohol ink, of course, dries super, super quick. So, I mean, you could stop right there, and can you guys see the sand paste now, maybe? A little better? It's just not wanting to show up on my webcam. Hopefully you guys can see it though. Okay, I'm going to add one more little spray. One thing I feel like makes it look really good is if it's all around the, the lip of the lid. I feel like it looks really aged if it's all around there kind of dripping down. So I'm going to kind of focus on that area. And alcohol ink is forgiving, not as forgiving as like color blooms or something, but you can add water. Okay, so that's the first step we're going to do. To add a little bit more interest and make it look more aged, we're going to use some of our Empress Gold Spray Mist to color bloom. So I'm going to shake it up really good. And I'm going to use a paintbrush to adhere it. I'm not going to just spray it on there. I'm going to use a paintbrush. And I'm going to stir the bottom to make sure all that mica is nice and mixed up. Yet it, it's a crazy, like you can even get like two or three different tones with one little splat of alcohol ink because um, it just really, when you add the water, it does different effects. So I'm just kind of going into the same areas and just using my paintbrush to kind of accentuate the drips that are already there and it just adds, you know, a different tone of brown which really helps make it look aged. So I'm not being particular at all, I'm just kind of following my guidelines already. I'm just adding a little bit more of the color bloom. Let's go around to the back. Now I usually focus most of my product on one area um, because usually only one side's going to show and I just don't like to waste a bunch. So I'll do the back, but I don't want to cover too much. Okay. Let's see here. Now the last step is we're going to do some splats with our worn leather color bloom spray. Let me do one more heat set really quickly. Yeah, it is really quick. I mean, honestly, it doesn't take that much. I know it, it probably seems like a lot of steps when you see a supply list that's, you know, 20 items long, but most of that's just embellishments. I'm basically just using two paints and, you know, some color bloom sprays with alcohol in it. And you can get some really cool effects. Um, I was going to mention really quickly, even though I didn't use this originally, the thing that would be perfect to use on this are the new... Um, artisan powders and I can never pronounce the names but I experimented and this one was the best so I'll go ahead and give you all that product number in case you have this on hand it's 991203 this stuff is like exactly the same color as that alcohol ink and it looked really really cool on there so I already experimented with that okay I'm gonna hold it up close one more time in an attempt to show that texture paste hopefully you guys can see that already looking pretty cool, pretty grungy, pretty aged. Um, I let it sit overnight originally, so with speed drying it, you know, you do lose a little bit of that effect. Okay, so let me grab my other bottle because I realized I forgot to splat that one. So I'm going to use the worn leather. I'm going to shake it up pretty well. <laughs> Delana, that's funny. <laughs> For me, it's the Frappuccino bottles because that is what I always drink. So I'm just going to take the nozzle, y'all, just and tap it down, just like that. I'm not even going to dip a paintbrush. I'm just going to use the nozzle, and it's kind of going everywhere. I don't really care. I mean, I've got glass tables, so no biggie for me. But I kind of sometimes I'll go down low with it, and then if you lift it up higher, you'll get smaller splats. So just do different ones. And then I always heat set it so that way they dry really quickly. They actually do. In some stores I see the bottled Pepsi still and it just reminds me of my childhood. I love it. So cool. 
Once you have the color bloom on there and dripped, you can even kind of um, just go in with your rag and just kind of blot the excess up and you'll still get the really cool color and you don't have to worry about it dripping. So it's still on there. All right, I'm gonna flip them to the back side and do that one more time. And then we can start embellishing, y'all. That actually is quicker than I thought it was gonna be. All right, so I'm just hitting this, you know, fairly firmly. And I'm gonna lift it up higher, and that is it. Okay, so we're gonna heat set that. And for some reason, this reminds me of a robin's egg, and even though that's the name of the um, paint, <laughs> eggs blue, but still. Okay, so our plain glass bottles are now very vintage, grungy looking, very antique looking. These look really pretty on the shelf. I have them all, which I can't wait to show you guys the room tour. I'm super excited. Okay. So there we go. That just kind of finished out adding the vintage look to it. Let me wipe some of this off of my mat. Okay, we're going to start on this one first. So the first thing we're going to work on is our little angel here, which is from the Relics and Artifacts line. So we're going to use this little figurine and then the Dresden wings, which hopefully you guys can see we did some cool effects here with them um, and covered them with the gold mica flakes. We're going to kind of tear them apart to give them more texture and alcohol ink them. So that's what we're going to work on first. So let me grab my package really quickly. These are the Dresden wings and you get 10 of them in a package. I love the Dresden. The item number is 942632. And I'm going to put a paper towel down so that way I can rest my bottle and usually I'll look and see which side I like the best where I feel like the best drips are and that will be my front side. I've already decided that's going to be my front side so I'll kind of put a, a rag down to kind of rest it. So let me get my wings which I've already cut apart. They just pull right apart. No big deal. So I'm using two of these and I'm going to layer them on top of each other. So the first one is going to stay as is, but the second one we're going to really play around with, okay? So I'm going to break out some more of the color bloom, and I'm going to give it just a good mist and just kind of soak it around in there. And this is really wetting that Dresden, and I'm just going to kind of start filling Filling is probably not the right word, kind of peeling, if not filling, the edges of the wings and trying to make them kind of, there we go, it's starting to split now. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's what I want. I want it to kind of break apart. Um, so I'm just going to kind of pull until I get that apart in different areas. And when we put some alcohol ink on there, that's really going to make them come into two pieces. So I really love all the Dresden stuff. It's just, it's so beautiful. Thank you for coming, Miko. Hello, hello. It does look like a Robin's Egg KK771. Oh, I wanted to say thank you to my special friend, Dana, and her husband. I think they are watching tonight. I don't know if they're chatting, but I wanted to say thank you for coming out. It's nice when, um, like even non-crafty people, you know, or she, well, she's artsy, but, you know, family members or friends that aren't necessarily part of, like, the scrapbooking community come out and watch the shows, it really means a lot to me. Um, I love your guys' support, so thank you so, 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 so much, everybody, for coming out. Um, I'm adding some alcohol ink onto here, and it's kind of falling apart. That's fine. I'm going to go ahead and tear it apart, so that way it looks like I did it intentionally, <laughs> when I really didn't, but I'm just alcohol inking the entire Dresden week. And I hope that came across right. I really appreciate everyone coming, whether you're in the um, crafty community or not. Like, it, I thank you guys all so much for coming. Right, I'm just kind of spreading the alcohol ink out. And I'm going to go in and mess with my edges a little bit more and really get them to kind of peel apart. There we go. See how that's literally just like pulling apart into two pieces? That is what we're going for. Um, that adds so much dimension from the front. It looks amazing, okay? So that's what we're going for. So I'm just kind of pulling these apart and playing with the edges. 
Okay, that one's good to go. And when we add the mica flakes on here, it looks like the entire thing is covered with the mica flakes, but it's really not. So it's kind of a little optical illusion there. I don't know how many layers are on this Dresden, but it's super cool. Okay, so that is good enough for me. I'm going to add one more layer of alcohol ink here because I kind of rubbed a lot of it off. And I'm just using my paintbrush to kind of spread it out evenly. Okay, and then I'm going to heat set it really quickly. Okay, now we're going to add some, this is what it looks like so far, already super dimensional super grungy. This, these Dresden trims do have such a shine to them, it's hard to show on camera. Hopefully you can see the dimension there. Okay. Oh, KK, okay, that is you. Hello. I'm so glad she's here. Okay, so let me grab my gold mica flakes. These are the gold leaf one. It's my most used one. I love these so much. The item number is 961756. So I'm just going to dump a little bit off there on the side. I may not use that many, but that's what we're doing. I'm going to grab my 3D matte gel as well, and the item number for that is 961398. This is a staple. I don't know what I would do without my 3D matte gel. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of take my paintbrush and randomly dabble. I love the words I use sometimes. I crack up. I have no professional lingo. I just use whatever word comes to mind. So this is dabbling. We're just dabbling some of the 3D matte gel on there. And then we're just going to sprinkle the mica flakes right on top of it. Okay, and I'm going to kind of press in. A lot of times I'll use the end of a paintbrush to kind of push. That way it doesn't stick um, to my fingers. Okay. And then I'm going to lift it up and make sure my edges are clear of the mica flakes. Oh, we're getting a lot of dimension here. Okay. Alright. So it's really hard to tell now, but that wing is covered with mica flakes. When we get both of them together, you'll be able to recognize the wing shape again, but right now it just kind of looks a little weird. But I promise you it will come together. Okay, we're going to do the same thing to the other one. We're going to do some more dabbling of the 3D matte gel and just put the rest of those mica flakes right on there. I swear everything in this art basics, art extravagance, art ingredients, everything in this line is so amazing. I use this stuff on everything. The microbeads are probably my favorite if I had to choose but that's really hard to do. Okay, again, I'm going to kind of clean up my edges, make sure my wing shape is still there. And that is it for that part. Set those aside to dry. Okay, I'm going to grab my little figurine here. And this is part of the Rising Spirit 3 Relics and Artifacts. I think this little figurine comes in a couple different packages, but that's the one I'm using it out of. And the item number is 941. 734. So I'm going to grab this little guy out, which I love. Okay, and I'm going to give it a little squirt of color bloom just to kind of go into the creases there. And I'm going to take the screw out of the head, which a lot of times I'll keep this on there if I'm doing different mediums as like something to hold on to. But for now, we're going to do that. Okay, let me look at my original. Okay. So now we're going to take our flower vine, which my favorite prima item of all time are these Gracie vines. I've used them over and over. The item number is 556280. Okay. And we are just going to take it and kind of fluff up the flowers because you know when things get packaged, they get flattened out a little bit. So you just want to fluff it up. Now this is the only flower set that we're not going to do a technique to. We're doing something cool to the other flowers, which I'm pretty excited to show you. I don't know if anybody can tell. Can anybody tell what I did to that flower there? I bet somebody will be able to tell. It's a really cool little technique I found out about, and I really like the way it looks. 
All right, so I'm just kind of spreading this out. I'm going to open up the end piece and use my paintbrush to curl it. Prima, they started making the vines again with this show, thankfully. So they have like a matching one for each collection. Um, but yeah, I agree. There's never enough vines. Like this is my favorite item of all time. I just, I love vines so much, especially the Gracie ones like this. And the uh, Summer Carnation ones. I really like that one. All right, let me see if I use this all as one piece. I think I cut the end off. Let me look here. Kind of fill around and see what I did. Sometimes it's hard to remember what you did exactly. Okay. Yeah, I think I used the whole thing. So we're just going to kind of bend it a little more. And I'm going to use, this is completely dry, so once again for time constraints, Miranda's going to go to her handy dandy hot glue. So I'm just going to add some hot glue to the back of the spine, just in a couple of spots. I don't really want to cover um, the entire thing with hot glue because I want to be able to move it around if I need to. And I'm going to cover a little bit of it. Let's see here. And I want the flower to start about right there so we can put our little angel up here in this piece. And let's see here. Excuse me while I just kind of manipulate this and try to get it how I want it to be. Sometimes it's tricky work getting these vines to do what you want. I think I'm going to cut off this piece right here on the bottom. And that's the great thing about vines is you can cut them in half and stretch it out. Um, I love doing that. You can really make your vines stretch by cutting them in half. Perfect. All right, let me glue this piece down. And I'll show you guys what we have so far. So all my leaves are still moving. I just have a couple of pieces glued down. And all my flowers are nice and dimensional. So this is what we have so far. This vine is beautiful. And to me, like, that's pretty as is. I mean, you don't even have to add anything else, and that's pretty. Um, I'm going to try to do this facing y'all. Let's see if I can do it that way because I feel like it's so much easier for y'all to see. Okay, we are going to add our beautiful little angel here. I'm going to get all the excess color bloom off the back so she'll glue down. Okay, and this is going up a little higher than the original one because I glued this a little too, uh, glued this a little too close to the top, but that's okay. There we go. All right, so I'm going to glue this piece down. It's really hard to recreate something exactly, so excuse me that this one's going to be a little higher, y'all. So I'm just gluing the feet there down into my flower base, holding it for just a second, and then I'm going to kind of cover the feet up with the flowers. So our little angel is kind of resting there at the top. Okay, we're going to add our wings now, which I love. So I'm going to tear these apart. These tear apart so easily. And I'm going to kind of bend them to give them a better shape than just being flat. So I'm just going to kind of manipulate it a little bit. Yeah, Delana, it's hard to get vines like exactly how you want them. Okay, I'm going to glue that one exactly like that. I think the reason I love vines so much is because I really struggle with clustering flowers. So for those of you, Carrie, for one, who can cluster flowers so well, like I, I just can't do it. I cannot make a flower cluster to save my life. So for me, the vines already have it like placed for me, and I guess that's why I like them so much. And the only time you will ever see leaves on my project, green leaves, or when I'm using vines, Okay, there's the first set of wings, and when I added that, I was like, it looks pretty, but it needs something else. So that's why I did the extra layer here of wings with the kind of texturized version. And I've got some medium still wet on here, so I'm going to try to peel it off a little bit. Okay, alright, so now we're going to glue these right on top of there right on top of the silver ones. 
and it just gives it this very 3D effect. It looks very cool. Okay, there's the first one. So you can see the dimension that it gives your project. It looks very cool. You're going to see some light on there for now because there's still some gel medium that's drying, but once that dries, you won't see any of that light at all. Bend that back. That one's a little less um, wet, as you can see there. Okay, I'm going to add that wing right on top too. And I always use the ends of my paint brushes. They're always covered in hot glue because I always stick them down in there. It's better than your finger though, right? Who wants to burn their finger? Okay, so there is our beautiful angel on top. Okay, so we are going to add a few more flowers in here. We're going to use the Esperanza flower pack. I love these so much. They're beautiful. Great vine here as well. I really like these too. This is the Flare. I hope I say that right. It's the blue ones. <laughs> the item number is 581886. Okay. Robbie, I'm so used to using hot glue. I, I rarely burn myself, but I used to all the time. Um, I'm just so impatient when it comes to using glue. I just love that hot glue is so quick. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab a couple of these flowers and I always like to reshape them and I always tear the backs off because like I said, unless it's a vine, the greenery has gotta go for me. Don't hate me for that, Carrie. Okay, so we're just gonna use those two for now and then this one is gonna go on the top of our other bottle. I don't know if you can see the difference there. Maybe that'll give away what I did to that flower. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of tuck these in and just fill out this vine a little bit more, just kind of layering these flowers. Again with the hot glue, because it's my favorite. And then once you're done with all this, you can really go in and move things around and kind of, um, you know, fluff everything up and get it exactly how you want it. For now, that blue one is a little too prominent for me, but we will tuck some of that away. Okay, we are going to add one more blue one, I think. Let's do that one here, which is not exactly like the original, but like I said, it's kind of hard to, to do it exactly the same. Let's see. No, I don't like that either. I'm going to add a white one there. We're going to do that one down here. Yep, on the bottom. Okay. All right, so one thing, the last touch I did here was I used another Relics and Artifacts piece. This is the Chandelier Pendants, and there's a couple of different ones. This is Chandelier Pendants 2. And the item number is 941673. And I'm going to use the smallest little piece right here. Okay, I'm just going to bend the wire like that. And then I'm going to use my Timmy scissors to cut it off. And the only thing I'm going to do to this is give it one squirt with um, some color bloom. And then I'm going to do one squirt of alcohol ink. And that's it. I mean, you can go crazy with these, or you can just go very simple, and they're still beautiful. All right, so quick heat set on that. Does anybody have any questions so far? Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Lisa. Hello, sweetie. You cringed when I pulled the greenery off of the bottom. <laughs> I just don't like greenery unless it's in a vine. I don't know why. And then I see other people do it. Maybe that's why my flower clusters are horrible because I don't use greenery. It's all becoming clear to me now. Okay, this is what we have so far. And before I add that pendant, which is the last step on this one, let me fluff this flower up a little bit. Okay, We're gonna add a little bit of alcohol ink to the center of these blue flowers because they're just kind of a little too blue. So we're gonna add water to the center of these. And this is one of my favorite things to do. You can do this with your color blooms too. And I'll just add like one or two drops 
or three or four to the center of the flower and then I squirt it with water and just allow it to spread and it's going to come out the bottom if you had too much but that's okay and that really just blends those flowers in and makes it look more appropriate to me okay so for a little pendant here, we are just going to add it. This is what I did. I threaded it up on the vine piece, just like this. I threaded it right on there. And then I recurled the little bottom of the vine with my paintbrush. So it is just completely attached to the vine. So it's just going to kind of dangle down there just like that. Okay. So this is our finished bottle here. Okay. And I already did the mica flakes and everything on there. And here is the original one, which of course had a little more time taken on it, a little more perfection. And a little chandelier pendant hanging down there. And you can see the wings when they're dry and the matte gels dry. It really looks really pretty. Okay, so we are done with that first one. Let's move on to the next one, which is a simpler one. Less um, embellishments, I guess we should say. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is our little leaf here. Um, I mean our little leaf, our little flower here. And I'm going to take the bottoms off again. Close your eyes, you guys. Sorry, but I just can't do it. Okay, so again, I'm going to squirt this with water right in the center, and I'm going to add a drop of alcohol ink and let it spread. And while that's drying, I'm going to do the rest of this so I can do the little technique on there that I did. Okay, so we are going to grab a few of those flowers that came from the inside of the bottle, the got flowers, and I just kind of cut some of them apart. I cut some of them into single petals, some of them into like little sets of two, just different um, size petals. We're going to grab a mold. I make a bunch of molds up at one time, that way I can just kind of sift through and pick one out. This is the one we're using tonight from the IOD mold set. Oh, Carrie, I'm sorry, I linked the, the mold set, but I don't have that one um, right here in front of me. Oh, goodness, I can't think which one this came from. But this is the one we're going to use, okay? We're going to use some of this uh, wire thread from Prima, and this is just a really pretty creamy color. The item number is 576981. So we're just going to kind of randomly wrap around on the bottom of our bottle. Nothing fancy or in particular. I'm just going to cut a piece off and however much I just cut off, that's what we're going to use. So I'm just going to figure out which side I want to be the front, which I think I want that to be the front. So I'm just going to start on the bottom here and just wrap around. And just keep wrapping this. No particular way. And I'm going to kind of turn around to the back and since this is wired, I'm going to kind of twist it every now and then together. That way it stays nice and tight on there. I don't have to glue it. Okay. So then I'm going to go back around on the front. So that's pretty much it, y'all. I'm just randomly wrapping this. Okay. I'm going to twist this back together one more time. You can see I didn't paint the bottom of the bottle there. Shortcuts. Shortcuts on Live with Prima. Okay. So I just twist it back together back there. And then I'm just going to cut the excess off. And then I'll just tuck that little tail down. And you won't be able to see it. Okay. So there in the front, we just have a little bit of texture on the bottom. And what I did is I took these little flower bits. And it was really fun to do. I just kind of randomly took them. Let me prop this bottle up so you can see again. And I just had not glued them coming out of the string. I just thought it looked really cool. Just a new little idea to add some texture. I grab my paintbrush really quickly. Let's see, what do we add on time? We might finish just in time tonight. So I'm taking the ones that are two pieces and just kind of tucking them into the string as if they're just kind of coming out from behind it. 
these little got flowers or I mean it doesn't matter how old a product is it's always in style when it's Prima I really feel that way like they it, it's just always amazing everything they make is just perfect most my favorite flower collections are the older ones I mean I love most of the older flowers as far as collections go I mean it doesn't matter when they were made I've got let's see my top favorites printery um, almanac collection epiphany and those are some of the older lines like Prima is always in style all right I'm just gonna kind of tuck a few there here and there just kind of randomly hopefully you can see what I'm going for and I'm just having a few of the single ones kind of coming down the side just a little whimsical touch. I just kind of wanted to add a little whimsical touch there. And then I'm going to add some coming around the edge here. And then when we add our lid, we'll have some coming out of the lid too. Okay, that's enough for now. We can add more later. We are going to add our mold right here to the top area, kind of right here. And I'm going to use, actually let's color this first before we put it on there. Didn't think about that. Alright, these are so easy to color, y'all. I love these molds because of that. I'm just going to give it one little spritz. It is paper clay. Um, and I'm going to add, let's see here, what colors did I use? I'm trying to look at the first one I did. I'm going to drop a little bit of alcohol ink on there. And then spritz it again. And let it kind of rub around, run, rub around, run around and then blot the excess off, just like that. And already that looks super cool. I mean, these paper clay molds are just, I'm so in love with them. You're not gonna see a project I'm gonna use that doesn't have them on them. I love them that much. All right, I'm gonna go back in with that Worn Leather Color Bloom. And I just basically tapped off in a couple of different places, just like that with my nozzle. And that was it. Just let that kind of run around a little bit too. And that just gave me a kind of variation in color, just like that. And that is it. So we're going to glue that to our bottle now. And since I just wet this paper clay, it's kind of got, it's more pliable now. I can kind of bend it to the shape of the bottle, which I should have done when the mold was wet, but I forgot to. Okay, so we're just going to add that there like that. So this one is super easy, y'all. Very, very easy. Okay. I'm going to grab some of the wooden icons from the Salvage District collection and I'm going to be using the little hearts which you get a ton of them in your little package here um, and the item number is 583774 and that's the little wooden icons package. I love these little hearts so much. They are just so adorable. I've used them on just about everything so far. And all I did was glue it right to the center of my paper clay piece. Okay. We're going to go in with some mica flakes. Let's grab our 3D matte gel again, item number 961398. And I'm just going to use my finger, y'all, and I'm just going to randomly kind of touch where I want to add some mica flakes. Just randomly. And I know there's a lot of different ways you can add mica flakes to your projects. Everybody's got different little tips, but this works well for me. So that's what I do. Okay. So I just randomly dabbed some of the gel all the way around the front. I don't want to waste too much on the back. I'll put a few in the back area. And I'm just going to go on there and kind of push a few onto those areas. And you're going to get some falling off. And then I'll just scoop those off the uh, craft mat at the end of the project. I love using these mica flakes. Microbeads and mica flakes. I mean, they're just perfect, perfect, perfect little accents. They just really add so much depth to a project. I really just love them. Okay, I'll get that item number again. I gave it earlier, but I forgot. To. But the item number is 961756. Yeah, let me grab, I'll, I'll grab the packaging really quickly, Carrie. Hold on one second.
Okay, this is the paper clay, the Prima IOD paper clay. That's what I'm using, and the item number is 814-991. Um, I've got the one I'm using sealed in a um, Ziploc baggie after you open it, but that's what you get right there. I love this paper clay. It's amazing. I just prefer to use the paper clay. It's just, oh, it's awesome. Very manipulatable. I just made that word up probably, but that's what we're going with. Okay, so this is what we have so far. And that is pretty much it, except for the lid, okay? And all I did, and I did this to the flowers on all of my um, bottles, but I'm only going to show you on this one because it just kind of is time consuming. So I'm going to kind of reshape these petals really quickly and then give it a quick heat set. Anybody has any questions, let me know because we are almost done. We got one more step. When you wet these flowers, they tend to lose their shape, but they go right back, so it's no worries. Okay, this is what I did. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference here, but hopefully you can. Do you see the difference in those two flowers? And they're exactly the same. And I was just playing around. I had this beeswax on my table for like forever. Um, it's just, I don't even know the brand, Melt Art Ranger Beeswax. Um, they're just little pebbles. So all I did, and it just ended up looking so cool, and it's kind of hard to see it on camera, but in person it looks really cool. So I'm going to heat my flour just a little bit. And then I'm going to drop a few of these little petals in here into the center first, because that's going to kind of act as my glue. And I'm going to hold my heat gun kind of far away, and then I'll get in closer. Yeah, I've only seen people using paper clay so far. I'm going to use some resin um, next week when I'm on vacation. I'm going to do some experimenting. But, you know, ooh, I just read the black glue sticks. That is cool. Linda does amazing work. All right, once the um, beeswax starts to melt, you can kind of move in further. And I don't know if you guys can see, because I can't hold it, but it's literally like changing colors as it spreads out. It's really, really cool. Like, I'll hold it up right now. You can see a totally different color where the beeswax is. It just gives it a richer um, color. So then I'll kind of put it out on the ends of the petals. And if your flower starts smoking, stop feeding it, <laughs> because mine did that the other day. But then again, I'm using this heat tool. But I really, really like this. I'm going to be doing this a lot from now on. It makes them kind of look porcelain or like they um, have enamel on them, and it's very cool. All right, you can kind of move it around and let them wax kind of flow. Alright, it's going to be super, super hot right now, so be careful. Um, but I kind of bend my petals up when it's still wet, because this is going to get really hard. Well, not super hard, but it's going to definitely harden. So you can really shape this, um, shape these petals when it's wet like this. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but it just totally changes the way that that flower looks, and it makes it look like really glass-like and enamel-like. It's really cool. So I did that on all of my flowers. Let me show you the bottle here. I don't know if y'all can tell, but on this flower as well, I used the um, beeswax. And on this flower, I used the beeswax, and it just really gave it such a cool little um, added definition to it. And I have no idea where the lid is to my flowers. Oh, of course I would do that. Oops, I melted that one so much the glue came off. Let me see if I can locate the lid to my got flowers. Because I took it off earlier and now I don't know where it is. And I don't think I do know where it is, y'all. I'm sorry. Very disorganized. But anyway, all you're going to do is screw your little lid on to the top here. I took some of the... La Rochelle trinkets from the Memory Hardware line. Let me grab those really quickly because they are so incredibly gorgeous. What did I do with them? There we go. 
these right here. You get these big beautiful bezels or you get these little mini ones that are kind of like, um, they remind me of like vintage coins. And I just used that same wired thread and wrapped it around the lid here of my jar and then attached my little trinket to it and it just kind of moves around. And all I did, y'all, was glue the flower on top of that. So I'm sorry that I lost my lid. I literally have no idea where it's at. And if I got up to look, it would take me forever. So that's all I did, y'all. I'm so sorry I lost the lid. I can't believe I did that. Ill prepared. But you'll just glue it on top of there, and that is it, y'all. So super easy. This bottle takes no time at all to do and very minimal embellishments. Besides the mediums, all I'm using is one flower and a paper plate piece. So it's very, very easy. Okay. So let me hold up all of the bottles here and move this out of the way and see if anybody has any questions. Oh, on the original piece, I forgot to show that. I did add another relics and artifacts piece to the top and this is from the, let me grab it really quickly, the Regalis collection. Very cool. I'm going to use this little one right here. The item number is 942670. Don't want to forget that step because it definitely um, polishes off this bottle over here. So I'm just going to add this to the top and do one little squirt of Color Bloom Spray. And it is a wrap on that one. A lot of times I'll use the uh, bottom of the Color Bloom Spray to kind of add the color. Gives you a little bit more control that way. And then once it kind of spreads around, you get this really um, antique effect. I can't believe I forgot that step. I'm sorry, y'all. You're probably wondering why I skipped that. Okay, so these are the bottles we created, y'all. And I have a gigantic mess here. I wish you guys could see this. Okay, if you have any questions, let me look on here and see if anybody has any questions right now. Let's see. Thank you guys so much for coming out. I hope you learned any tips or techniques or anything. Hopefully, it took away something from the show tonight. I love these relics and artifacts. I mean, they are so perfect. I've always been a fan of resin, so I'm a happy camper with these IOD molds and the relics and artifacts line. I mean, I'm just a happy girl. All right. Carrie is posting the link to her using the glue sticks. So if you guys do not have paper clay, I know we all have glue sticks. That's a great tutorial there to check out. Um, okay, I'm glad. I'm glad you learned something. Thank you so much, you guys, for coming out. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm going to stop the recording if nobody has any questions. And then... I will see you guys next time on Live with Prima. Okay, have a great night, everybody. Let me find my mouse now with my cute little mouse pet. Okay. <laughs>